what's like one of your fears? Like what's a fear you have of AI? Like if you have like a fearful space that it could go, like, I know you mentioned it a little bit. This morning I, w- I was testing our new model and I got a question. I got emailed a question that I didn't quite understand. Uh, and I put it in the model, this GPT-5, and it answered it perfectly. And I really kind of sat back in my chair and I was just like, oh, oh man, here it is moment. And I got over it quickly. I got busy onto the next thing. But it was like, a, I mean, it was what kind of we were talking about. I felt like useless relative to the AI in this thing that I felt like I should have been able to do and I couldn't and it was really hard, but the AI just did it like that. Yeah. It was, it was a weird feeling. You heard that right. The man who helped bring ChatGPT to the world just compared its next version to a nuclear bomb. AI just passed a human test, one designed to keep it out. Meta offered $1 billion to a single researcher who flat out said no. This week in AI, it's off the rails. We're talking ChatGPT's brand new study mode, AI agents clicking I'm not a robot without hesitation and even more seismic shifts. Google, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Adobe. They all just dropped serious upgrades. Let's unpack it. Let's kick things off with something that's immediately impacting millions. ChatGPT's new study mode. If you've ever used the chatbot to cram for finals, prep for an exam, or knock out a homework assignment, you know the drill. Plug in a prompt, get a polished answer in seconds. Efficient? Sure. But if you're trying to actually learn, long term, it's almost counterproductive. That's why OpenAI flipped the script. Study mode is built not to answer questions, but to teach. Here's how it works. ChatGPT asks what you're learning, gauges your current knowledge level, and tailors explanations to match your skill set. Struggling with sinusoidal positional encodings or discrete math. It doesn't just hand over definitions, it scaffolds your understanding, layering context, concept, then application. It even drops Socratic-style prompts, inviting you to reflect, check your reasoning, and build metacognitive awareness. And because it's chat-based, it adapts over time. Been stuck on a subject for a week? It remembers that and builds continuity. But this isn't just a UX improvement. It's grounded in cognitive science. OpenAI built it with input from real educators, researchers, and learning theorists. They leveraged concepts like working memory optimization, curiosity-driven exploration, and spaced repetition. Why? Because AI cheating is exploding. UK universities reported nearly 7,000 confirmed cheating cases in a single year, most involving AI-generated responses. That's a five-fold increase in just 12 months. In the US, a third of college-aged adults are already using ChatGPT, and about 25% of messages are school-related. Study mode is OpenAI's answer, not just giving students tools, but making those tools ethical effective, and aligned with human learning. One student, Maggie Wang, said it finally helped her grasp sinusoidal encodings after repeated failures. She called it the tutor that never gets tired. That's not just clever branding. That's the vision, always on, always adapting AI education. Now this next story feels like satire. A ChatGPT-powered agent just clicked a Verify Your Human checkbox and passed. Let's break that down. ChatGPT agents now operate in sandboxed environments, complete with virtual browsers and OS-level autonomy. This means they can navigate the real web, interact with forms, pages, scripts, and perform complex multi-step tasks. Someone gave the agent a task that landed it on a Cloudflare-protected page. You know the drill. Tick the checkbox to prove you're human. The agent clicked it. Then it narrated its action. This step is necessary to prove I'm not a bot. It passed. No capture images, no blurry traffic lights. Why? 
because it got through Cloudflare Turnstile, the behavioral layer. Turnstile evaluates micro interactions, mouse trajectory, click cadence, browser fingerprint, IP entropy. The agent mimicked human patterns closely enough to breeze through. This is monumental. Why? Because CAPTCHA, short for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart, has long been the barrier between bots and the real web. But AI didn't brute force it. It blended in. And that's the real kicker. This isn't just code executing commands. It's autonomous decision-making in a behavioral shell that mirrors human habits. Someone on Reddit even had the agent order groceries with a budget and dietary constraints. It nailed it. But it's not perfect. Another user asked it to navigate Stop and Shop's clunky site. It failed. Turns out, poor UX still beats good AI. Still, the implications are huge. We're not just watching AI answer questions anymore. We're watching it act. Intuitively. Autonomously. Believably. Now, let's talk GPT-5. In a recent interview, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman said that testing GPT-5 reminded him of the Manhattan Project. Let that sink in. The man responsible for guiding this technology called its latest iteration emotionally disturbing. Not because it was buggy, not because it failed, but because of how powerful it felt, how responsive, how intuitive. He described sessions where he watched GPT-5 in action and felt genuinely uneasy. That's a strong statement, especially from someone who's been on the bleeding edge since GPT-1. Altman didn't stop there. He criticized the current state of AI oversight. There are no adults in the room. Translation? The people meant to regulate and monitor AI development don't have the technical fluency, infrastructure, or velocity to keep pace. And that gap, the delta between capability and control, is widening fast. Meanwhile, over at Meta, Zuckerberg is trying to buy his way into the superintelligence race. He approached Mera Marathi's team at Thinking Machines Lab and dropped the biggest recruitment offers the AI industry has ever seen. We're talking $200 million to $500 million packages, some up to $1 billion, for a single researcher over four years. And they all declined. Every single one. That's not just rejection. It's a philosophical stance. These researchers aren't just looking for paychecks. They're seeking alignment, mission, trust. The rejection signals that Meta's culture, or its long-term vision, may be misaligned with those values. In an era where top AI minds can write their own ticket, integrity is now a recruiting differentiator. While the headlines focused on ChatGPT and Meta, the rest of the AI world stayed in high gear. Let's rapid fire through this week's most significant drops. Number one, ideograms character. Generator, upload a photo. Generate consistent characters across styles and poses. Not just facial replication, hair, lighting, even clothing continuity. Massive for branding, avatars, comic artists. Fiction mode pushes output into stylized, surreal territory. Combined with magic fill or remix, you've got end-to-end -end visual pipelines. Number two, Microsoft Edge Copilot multi-tab summarization, voice commands, cross-tab insights. It reads, compares, highlights, differences in real time, new unified input bar, summaries, search, plus, chat plus, nav in one. And they're testing Copilot-based automation for grouped research journeys. Number three, Google's AI search. Upgrades desktop image uploads are now live. PDF support coming next. Soon, you'll be able to ask contextual questions about full documents. Canvas, their new planning tool, lives persistently in a sidebar. Think evolving to-do list meets semantic research assistant. Search live equal mobile camera input, plus real-time object recognition. 
plus natural language dialogue via Google Lens, based on Project Astra. Number 4. NVIDIA Llama Neotron Super V1.5 This open model just beat every competitor in reasoning, coding, math, and science. Trained on 26 M rows of synthetic, high-quality data, fine-tuned via DPO and RLVR. What's wild? It runs on a single H100 GPU and still dominates. Deployment is seamless via NVIDIA NIM microservices, meaning even small teams can leverage its capabilities fast. Number 5. Adobe Photoshop AI Updates Harmonize seamless object insertion with lighting, shadow matching. Generative upscale. Up to 8 MLP without over-sharpening artifacts. Object remove. Firefly model now leaves fewer glitches. Better edge blending. Desktop projects. Shared asset workspaces. Sure async team collaboration without version chaos. So here's the question. Is AI crossing a line when it clicks, I am not a robot, and actually gets away with it? Is that efficiency, or deception, or both? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to stay ahead of this AI roller coaster, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell. This is AI Ascension. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.